Hi, in this video let's see about inflation, the concept and its effects on an economy. First let's look at the meaning of inflation. It is nothing but a general rise in prices of goods and services. The key word over here is sustained and non-seasonal. The price hike should be perpetual in nature and it should not be over a short period of time. And the price rise also should be because of non-seasonal changes in the economy. Inflation is normally expressed as a percentage rate and it is usually measured for a reference period of time which is usually a year. In India we use something called as CPI combined to measure the rate of inflation. Let's see what CPI is in the next slide. There are two types of indices. One is wholesale price index, the other one is consumer price index. Wholesale price index measures changes in average prices of goods and services in a wholesale market. Consumer price index measures changes in price of a consumer has to pay for a designated commodity basket. It is a representative basket which would consist of a particular list of commodities a consumer would normally use and CPI measures the price change for the commodities in that particular basket. In India, we used to use WPI back then to measure the rate of inflation. Now they've realized that CPI combined, which is uh, where we use WPI and CPI to measure inflation, they found out that this is more effective than using wholesale price index alone. Now let's move on to the types of inflation. Inflation can be categorized on a lot of basis. One is government's reaction or control. The other one is according to the rate of inflation. The next one is time or period of occurrence. And there's also something called as cost push inflation and demand pull inflation, which is not included in the flow chart. Let's look at the types of inflation in detail. First one is open inflation. It is the sort of inflation in which the government takes no measures to curb the price hike. The prices are allowed to go high and the government doesn't intervene at all. In suppressed inflation, like the name suggests, the price hike is suppressed by government measures like rationing and price control. Like even subsidies are one such technique to reduce price hike. But this is considered to be more dangerous than open inflation simply because producers are more encouraged to actually hold and black market goods, creating artificial demand and pushing the prices of goods and services even higher. Next, let's see the types of inflation based on rate. First one is creeping inflation. When the price hike is lesser than 3%, it's called creeping inflation. It is normally safe and it is very essential for an economy for its regular growth. And if this is not curbed, it leads to something called as walking or trotting inflation, where the price hike is between 3 and 7 percentage, but it's less than 10 percentage. It is normally a warning sign for the government to take measures to curb inflation. And if the price hike still isn't curbed, then it leads to something called as running inflation, where the price hike is between 10 and 20 percentage. This is supposed to affect the economy very adversely. And if this is also not checked, then it gives rise to something called as hyper or runaway or galloping inflation, where the price hike is between 20 and 100 percentage. This totally collapses the economy. Then the next type of inflation is based on the time of occurrence. First one is wartime inflation, where the government will need a lot of money to meet war expenses. So they increase the price of goods and services. Also, not much attention is paid to consumer goods, so sellers generally tend to hike the prices, again leading to inflation. Then there's post-war inflation. So once a war is over, a lot of repairs and reconstruction will have to be done, for which the government will need money. Also, the taxes uh, levied during the war will be abolished and the loan borrowed from public will be repaid by the government, which will lead to a lot of supply of money in the hands of the public, but the production of goods and services will not be matching the demand that the public will have, which will push the price of the products and services high, leading to inflation. Then there's something called as peacetime inflation, 
developing and underdeveloped countries need a lot of money for economic planning and economic development so they normally tend to something called as deficit financing where the central bank is asked to circulate more money in the economy leaving the public with more money to spend which leads to higher demand which is not met by met by supply this leads to inflation again then let's look at inflation based on causes this was not included in the flow chart first one is demand pull inflation which like the name suggests is due to higher demand of goods and services over supply then there is cost push inflation which is due to increased import costs like raw material wages etc now there are factors that apply, that that affect demand and also there are factors that affect supply let's look at them first one is increase in money supply or disposable income this we already seen where there is more money for the public to spend their demand is very high which is not met by the supply that is in the market this leads to a price hike then cheap monetary policy is where the banks lend money to the public at a very low rate again the public has more money in their hands to actually spend which is not met by the supply an increase in public expenditure leads to higher consumption which again pushes the prices of goods and services in an economy and there are times when the government pays the money that they that it borrows from the public which again leaves the public with a lot of money leading to inflation now let's look at factors affecting supply the shortage in the factors of production like land labor and capital increases the cost of production for example shortage in the labor leads to higher wage it increases the cost of production and price of goods and services natural calamities like earthquake landslide and tsunami affects production and supply of goods and services the end result is price rise artificial scarcities created by activities like hoarding and speculative trading in commodities result in price hike increase in export of a particular commodity leads to shortage of goods in the domestic market it pushes up prices international factors like oil price hike shortage in production of certain commodities lead to higher import prices now let's look at effects of inflation under redistribution of income and wealth we look at debtors versus creditors debtor always gains and creditors lose when there is inflation i'll give you an example supposing a debtor borrows 100 rupees and he is a mango vendor the price of mango on day 1 is 10 rupees per mango the debtor can buy 10 mangoes for 100 rupees on day 2 the price of mango is 20 rupees the debtor can sell 10 mangoes for 200 rupees the debtor can repay his debt by selling only 5 mangoes so he gains either 100 rupees or 5 mangoes wherein the creditor on the other hand can buy only 5 mangoes with 100 rupees suppose he purchased mango on day 1 instead of lending he may have bought 10 mangoes so he loses 5 mangoes this explains why a debtor gains and a creditor loses during inflation producers and consumers the producers profit will increase as a result of inflation but for consumers the purchasing power of money held by consumer would decline so they'll have to pay more money to purchase the same amount of goods and services between flexible income group and fixed income group the salary or the income earned by flexible income group automatically would get adjusted according to the rate changes in the economy they don't get affected by inflation but fixed income group like salaried people and salaried employees would get affected by the price rise in an economy debenture or bond holders versus equity holders here the debenture holders or the bond holders will lose in case of inflation because for them to gain interest rate should be more than the rate of inflation which is normally not the case so they end up losing but equity holders 
income depend on the profit of the company in inflationary situation the companies earn more profit so the equity holders also earn more income let's look at the effects of inflation on production and consumption it normally leads to fall in demand for goods and services and price hike also curtails amount of production in packaged items to maintain the price per package the producers normally reduce quantity or quality or both in store raising prices which leads to lower consumption because the consumer satisfaction is very low so basically inflation leads to less production and lesser consumption other effects under other effects first one is balance of payment inflation normally reduces exports and increases imports which results in an unfavorable balance of payment and unfavorable balance of payment leads to depreciation of domestic currency because the purchasing power of domestic currency falls due to higher imports and lower exports inflation also creates social and political tension leading to strikes etc now uh, as a part of inflation let's also look at philips curve which explains the relationship between the rate of inflation and rate of unemployment philips curve basically suggests where there is higher rate of inflation the rate of unemployment is very low that's about it let's also look at other concepts involved in inflation first one is deflation it is nothing but the opposite of inflation where there is a fall in the price of goods and services in an economy over here the key word is persistent like how for inflation the price hike has to be over a sustainable period of time for de deflation the fall in prices should also be for a sustainable period of time the effects and causes of deflation are exactly the opposite to that of inflation then there's something called as disinflation when the rate of inflation is at a slower rate it's called disinflation for example if the rate of inflation last month was 6 percentage and of this month it is 5 percentage there is still inflation but it is at a lower rate compared to that of the previous month reflation is where the government takes measures to actually increase the price of goods and services in, in an economy to actually stimulate the economy stagflation coexistence of both stagnation and inflation in an economy is called stagflation usually when there is inflation like how we saw on the philips curve higher inflation leads to lower employment but and the economy is supposed to grow but stagflation is a state where there is low national income growth and high un unemployment despite inflation this is a graph depiction so when there is deflation the the prices of goods and services fall so the government takes measures to actually stimulate the growth of economy which is called reflation and they push the prices up by taking various measures and the price of goods and services increase and over time the price in the price of goods and services fall but still the price in goods are at a higher rate but it is comparatively lower to the previous months like august and september then again it goes below the timeline and again leads to deflation in next video we'll look at the measures taken to curb inflation thank you